I've never seen anything like this. This isn't just that we can describe it as Orwellian. It's straight out of Orwell's 1984. If you recall that book, which everyone should reread because it's apparently become more relevant now than ever, remember there was a distinction between the truth, which was actually what was happening, the actual circumstances, and fact. Facts in that book are just what people believed to be the circumstances. And <laughs> Google, I'm sorry, I'm just, this makes me so uncomfortable, it hurts my brain. Google has now released new guidelines that aren't just targeting conspiracy websites. They are openly, directly targeting them, and they say that. But they're targeting any site which would even attempt to contradict what they claim are well-established historical and scientific facts. That is their wording. So one of the examples in this document talks about how they're going to rate main content on web pages, and that's how the pages show up in search rankings. Websites that present unsubstantiated conspiracy theories as if the information were factual. And then it gives an example of the Vatican's knowledge of the planet Nibiru. That's a pretty far out there theory for a lot of people. But as we all know, this has to do with anything that contradicts what they want people to think about how reality is. Google's Eric Schmidt, of course, attending Bilderberg every year. Help us understand where's the future of search going. Well, when, when you use Google, um, do you get more than one answer? Of course you do. Yeah, of course. Well, that's a bug. Yeah. We, we have more bugs per second in, in the world. There because are... we, we should be able to give you the right answer just once. So they're going to determine what it is that people are allowed to see on the internet. It used to be we talked about this, ranking information, hiding information from people. But now, now in their new document, it's the new quality raters guidelines. They put out certain examples of conspiracy theory websites they're going to target. But it isn't just that. It's not even remotely just that. It's not going to be limited to just the outlandish, crazy conspiracy theories. Which, by the way, is why I think some of them are being pushed so hard right now. Some of the ones that you cannot wrap your mind around. I think the reason they're doing that is so they can discredit anyone who dares to ask any questions that go against what Google calls well-established scientific and historical facts and just lump everybody together in the crazy bag. Buried in this 160 pages, down on page 108, you have this description of ratings of fails to meet that should be assigned to results that are considered helpful or satisfying to no or very few users. Now look at the last two bullet points on here. Pages that directly contradict well-established scientific or medical consensus, and pages that directly contradict well-established historical facts. So you'll remember just a couple of years ago when the buzz term under Obama was the science is settled on climate change. The science is settled. Remember how they kept saying that over and over and over? Well, the science is settled, everybody. Sorry. As if you just say it repeatedly, that means it's true. Or websites that will extol all the virtues of vaccinations without providing anybody any information about the very real health risks and well-established historical facts. Geez, I guess that means the magic bullet theory for the JFK assassination. That would be a well-established historical fact, and so that will be what people get to see online. And anything that contradicts or questions what they determine, what they determine is a well-established scientific, medical, or historical fact, well, that information is going to get buried. It doesn't matter if like on our channel, we're showing declassified documents. And now you have a new thing they've put up on YouTube to let me know that a lot more of my videos have now been identified as not suitable for advertisers. And I've explained this to you guys before. This isn't even about demonetization. This has to do with the burying of content and putting it in a virtual box so other people can't see it making sure it doesn't show up in searches, making sure it doesn't come up as related content for other videos, making sure that even sometimes my own subscribers who sign up for alerts to my videos coming out 
don't get those alerts, so they have no idea I even put a new video up unless they come and physically check it. And no one sees the video unless viewers share it themselves on Facebook and Twitter and all that, which of course, as we know, Facebook has their own quality control system that's going to match up with Google. This is where the whole fake news thing was always going. It was always going to this level of Orwellian censorship. And why? Because as I've told you guys many times before, the World Wide Web, which they very purposefully called the web, has always been a cybernetic feedback loop of communication and control. They're controlling what people think with this, literally. One way to think about this is we're trying to make people better people, literally give them better ideas, better uh, augmenting their experience. Think of it as augmented humanity. Why can I say that? Because just before these new guidelines came out, NPR put out this article they were all miffed because they claim that people aren't getting the well-established medical quote-unquote facts. And one of the examples they give in here has to do with what they claim is misinformation about the health benefits of colloidal silver. That's just, that's tip of the iceberg, okay, about what they claim are medical facts, quote-unquote. They always put articles like this out, by the way, right before they're going to hit everyone with their new guidelines. It's a problem-reaction-solution tactic. So I skipped past all that and just got right down into the meat of this article where they always bury the information that they figure most people won't read because they just read the first paragraph in the headline. And it says the reason this matters is because what shows up in search results shapes people's opinions. They know that the first things that people see when they Google something is going to be what most people just automatically believe. They're not going to go do their own research. They've replaced their brain with Google and they could sway people's opinion based on what they showed. If it was mostly negative information or mostly positive information, they could get people to believe whatever they wanted them to. And that's what it says down here. The ordering is everything. So the big finding is the degree to which we can manipulate people's healthcare decisions simply by changing the rankings of search results. And I've been getting messages from people lately saying, they are censoring especially any kind of video that's warning about this right here or that's warning about AI making decisions because these decisions about these rankings are all being made by computers. The decisions on our YouTube channel about what's going to be seen by people, that's all AI making those decisions. That's not a human being making those decisions. And more and more of these decisions about what you can learn and what you can know and what people can talk about, those are being made by computers. People don't realize how much of our society now is going to be based on what a computer says is okay for us or not. It's straight out of rollerball. Remember the zero computer and rollerball that forgot the 13th century? A little confused again here today. This is embarrassing. It's embarrassing to misplace things. Um, misplacing data? Hmm. The whole of the 13th century. This, this is Zero's fault. Zero. He's the world's file cabinet. That's what this is, okay? It's the same exact thing. And the virtual world is starting to merge with reality. This is the issue. Dan Dix put this video up. The Vancouver Police Department is the first police agency in Canada to implement predictive policing technology. Just a little while back about how police in Vancouver are now using prediction technology to send out squads for pre-crime arrests. The new predictive system helps us to be a step ahead of potential offenders. Instead of just informing officers where crime happened two hours ago, we'll now be able to let them know where crime is predicted to happen two hours from now. What is that? It's when a computer predicts that a crime will happen in an area in a couple of hours. So they preemptively send police there all amped up looking for a crime before it's even occurred. And of course, if you're looking for something, you're usually going to find it, right? So now a computer is going to make decisions about where police state squads are going to be sent before a crime has occurred. And more and more decisions like this are going to be made by AI. And they don't want us talking about that. One of the videos they flagged on our channel, and they didn't flag it until recently, so it got, it got to have its full views, and then they flagged it, and now it's since been shut down because it had an ambiguous title, that's why is the one about society being programmed by a black box. They don't want people talking about that at all. Anyway, so I just thought you guys should be updated on the fact that we've now moved to the phase where they're going to shut down and bury 
anything that contradicts well-established scientific or medical consensus, which we most of us know what that means, and contradict well-established historical facts, e.g. unsubstantiated conspiracy theories. They also don't care if it's a substantiated conspiracy theory either. If it goes against the establishment narrative, it's going to be buried. So the global model, the global world, the World Wide Web, is based on a consensus model. Majority rules and minority has no voice at all. But with the added bonus of being able to manipulate what the consensus believes through modified search engine results and memory holding information on the web. And people don't even realize this is what's going on. We don't want to live in a society where we're not allowed to question official narratives. Where we're just spoon-fed what we're supposed to believe about how everything works. And we can't figure anything out for ourselves because they're going to tell us exactly what we're allowed to know. Nobody wants to live in this world they're creating. Nobody. If people really thought about it, got off the computer and formed their own opinion without the aid of Google and Facebook for two seconds, and they really thought about this, nobody wants to live in this world that they're creating. A world where you can't ask questions. A world where you're spoon-fed your prescribed view of how everything is and you're told exactly what you're allowed to think and see and know and learn about. This is 1984. This is where we are. Doesn't matter how much more technologically advanced we get in the years to come, it'll still be 1984. When, when you use Google, um, do you get more than one answer? Of course you do. Yeah, of course. Well, that's a bug. One way to think about this is we're trying to make people better people, literally give them better ideas, better uh, augmenting their experience. Think of it as augmented humanity. Think of it as augmented humanity. Think of it as augmented humanity.